First, we had uh, New in New York City multiple uh, cases where police officers were called to a scene and they were attacked. Make, make no uh, mistake about it, they were attacked when they, they were doused with buckets of water and buckets were thrown at them as they were trying to uh, affect the rest. Uh, this is a situation that cannot exist in this world. Uh, there are there are charges that could be brought up, 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 you know, about against these these persons for doing these things. Uh, but in New York City, they're having having big problems, bigger problems than just getting doused with water. Uh, I happened to be at the uh, press conference supporting Pat Lynch and the New York City PBA at City Hall the other day, and I had a, an opportunity to speak with Pat for a while, and. Uh, he has this lingering effect that's going on there from the Daniel Pantaleo case, the Eric Garner case, where uh, you have a, a mayor who is not supporting or not backing the police officers and the jobs that they're doing. So you have a, uh, a police officers out there on patrol that are afraid to do their job. They're afraid of cameras. They're afraid of if, if they do their job correctly, that the, the mayor will not back them. And you know what? I believe they're right. You know, but that this can't exist. You can't have, have anarchy, uh, you know, and whatever happens in New York City, it seems to trickle its way east to, New, to Nassau County and Suffolk County. So uh, I received a phone call the other day from uh, Legislator Laversan, and he, he was very concerned about the dousing. And, uh, he said he wants to put, put a bill in that protects the officers, another level of uh, security for the police officers. And uh, I was all about it. I, I, I spoke with them. We, we put this thing in motion. And this is something that's necessary. In order for us to protect you, we have to get protected too. And to, to have something like this in a situation like this where you have Josh, and on a state level, I had Mike, we have Mike LaPetri from uh, Long Island, and he was holding that press, press conference at City Hall trying to protect the police officers. So, of course, I, I, you know, I said, you know, Josh, whatever you want to do, you got our full support. And here I am today backing Josh, who's backing the police officers, who backed the community. It's a cycle. We work together. We protect the public. And if we don't get protected, We'll have much the same as we have in the city where the cops are, are scared to do their job. And the worst part of last week was obviously the mass shootings, which uh, I'm reading the paper this morning. I'm reading about a 25-year-old girl in Dayton that was protecting her child, her, her uh, newborn six-month-old baby. She got sh shot and was killed, saving her her child's life. That can't happen here, but it can. And all of those that believe it can happen here, you're just, you know, kidding yourselves. Uh, Nassau County's on high alert, the Nassau County Police Department, and that's good. High alert should not be a reactionary situation. It should be something that we're on daily. This problem's not going away. This is an epidemic. I was reading the numbers. We have 251 mass shootings year to date. That's that's one a day. That's unacceptable. And again, to think that that can't happen here, you're you're kidding yourself. So whatever we're doing as a, a county, we're doing as a police department, that can't end. It can't be a cooling off period like two weeks later and say, hey, all right nothing's happened let's go back to you know where we were we need dedicated officers in our soft uh, spots we we have we need them in the schools we need school resource officers we need them in the malls we need them in the arenas we need them wherever there's large gatherings we need to pr be proactive not reactionary and you know if we're if we're being reactionary we're not doing our jobs so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Legislator uh, Josh Lapisan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Josh.
Good morning, everybody. Thank you to PBA President McDermott and each of the PBA's members for the heroism they display on a daily basis and for their commitment to protecting Nassau County's residents. 251, 217. These are two numbers that should stick out to every American citizen this morning. That is because there have been 251 mass shootings this year in just 217 days in 2019. Whether you're at a movie theater or a Walmart or a college campus or a bar or a concert or your house of worship or a food festival or quite frankly anywhere, there is a 1 in 315 chance that you will be subject to an act of gun violence. I grew up in what has been called the mass shooting generation. And though some have become numb to scenes of unspeakable violence, we must never lose our sense of horror. We must never accept this as the status quo. That is why this morning I am announcing a series of policy recommendations to improve public safety here in Nassau County. I've spoken to the police commissioner earlier this morning and look forward to a collaboration between his office, the county executive's office, President McDermott and the PBA, as well as my colleagues here in the legislature. First and foremost, we cannot keep our community safe if we do not keep our officers safe. The incidents of water being doused and dumped on New York City police officers were vile examples of behavior unbecoming of members of a civil society. Our officers must know that if anybody deliberately hinders their ability to carry out their duties, that they are fully within their rights to arrest this individual. Our officers must know that their government has made it categorically clear that individuals who target first responders will face justice. That is why I have filed a bill to prohibit harassment against a police officer, a peace officer, or any first responder in Nassau County. Under this bill, any person found guilty of throwing water or any other substance at an officer will be subject to a fine of up to $1,000 and up to one year in jail. Let me be clear. No person in no occupation should ever be subject to an attack for simply doing their own job. As we saw in Dayton and El Paso, our cops are the very first people called in the presence of clear danger. They deserve our respect and anything less simply cannot be tolerated. Secondly, I am urging this legislature to create a permanent standing committee on crisis response. This committee should hold confidential hearings to gather information from law enforcement officers, elected officials, and crisis managers from cities across the nation who have experienced precisely the type of violence we saw in El Paso and Dayton this weekend. While there is no solace that can be taken from these atrocities, knowledge can be gained, and we may learn where similar vulnerabilities exist locally, where protocols and procedures can be updated, and where immediate actions can be taken as a county to potentially prevent a disaster. Similar task forces have been convened throughout the previous decades, and just as the legislature's Superstorm Sandy Review Committee hopes to evaluate the shortcomings from municipalities across the nation and learn how to best prepare our county in terms of disaster relief, this new committee would be no different in its charge. Third, Nassau County's outstanding hospitals must continue to be included in the overall conversation on crisis response. I am calling for this legislature to convene a confidential roundtable with our largest hospitals to ensure that Nassau County is as ready as it ever will be in the event of a mass casualty incident. From immediate blood donation to emergency communication to the physical safety of these very buildings, now is the time to engage in this difficult yet necessary conversation. And lastly, we need to loop young people into the conversation. Increasingly, we are seeing that our young people are our first line of defense to spot warning signs on social media. The El Paso shooter posted a manifesto on 8chan prior to the attack, and similar acts of violence have been tipped off on social media in the past. I believe our police need to engage in a further dialogue with young people to better train youths to spot suspicious behavior. 
and to establish uniform protocols in schools across the county regarding where kids can report where they perceive to be dangerous behavior. My remarks this morning are not intended to strike fear into the hearts of Nassau County citizenry. On the contrary, the plans I articulated simply deal with the grim reality we are living in 2019. Yes, Nassau County is currently enjoying an all-time low in crime. However, as we saw just this past weekend in El Paso, one of the nation's safest cities, we are not immune to the depraved and evil consequences of gun violence on a mass scale. Without sweeping action from federal officials, this will remain the case. Our collective action may save the lives of residents and law enforcement alike. Our job is to ensure that resources can be mobilized expeditiously, personnel are adequately trained and equipped, and that the public is knowledgeable of protocols and procedures if, God forbid, they find themselves in an incident. Nassau County simply cannot afford to wait. Thank you. Any questions? Josh? Sure, I'm asking. You would think so. So, I'm, look, I, I'm a brand new legislator serving in my first term. Uh, this legislature has several permanent standing committees. I'm a member of several of them. I believe we should have a permanent standing committee on crisis response, where we can learn from hindsight, where we can gather in confidential hearings elected officials and crisis managers, hospital officials, and folks involved in mass casualty incidents all across the nation to learn from hindsight. Uh, we need to learn from those who've experienced these types of incidents, and it's naive to believe that Nassau County would be immune to this type of violence. So in, a, in, a, in about an hour, I'm going to make a formal request to both the presiding officer and to the minority leader to establish a permanent committee that would be filled by both Republicans and Democrats and to hold these hearings immediately. So, so there, there may be meetings about this, but there's no sole committee designed for just crisis. Correct. And I, and I believe this is within the purview of the legislature. Right? We're the fiduciaries of the county. Right? We oversee a $3 billion budget. It's our job to evaluate where mass casualty incidents have taken place across the county for us to know where we can steer funding for resources and training, etc. So I'm hoping we'll convene this committee immediately. It was, the sh it was the shootings this weekend. Originally, I had spoken to uh, President McDermott to hold a press conference to announce my bill. Uh, then this weekend happened, so I believed it was timely to announce uh, these initiatives in, in, in one shot. Uh, this weekend was one of the deadliest weekends in the history of the United States of America. Right, I'm 25 years old. I've grown up in what's been called the mass shooting generation. Uh, my generation no longer wants to wait, as the only millennial legislature in this building behind me um, demanding that we don't wait. I'm not 25 like him. My son turned 25 yesterday. I got hearing loss. <laughs> Are you talking about uh, Assemblyman LePetri's bill? His is on a, a, a state level. He's looking for it to become a felony, I believe. And uh, we're looking uh, here for this to become a, a, a Class A misdemeanor? Yes. yes. So the state bill would be stronger in terms of penalties? Yes. But of course they may not pass it. But it, it may not get passed. So listen, uh, any level to protect the police officers is, is good with me, obviously. And I, I, again, I want to thank Josh for, for considering us and, and, and feeling what, exactly what we felt when we saw that. You know, I, I, I think I can speak for all the officers that are behind me and all the officers in the country. When you saw, saw that police officer get doused with the water and he just walked like it, it, it didn't even happen, you're just thinking, how could you let that happen? How in the world could you let that happen? I'm not in the city. I, I'm not dealing with you know the fallout from the Eric Garner uh, uh, case. I'm not. I'm not dealing with it as much, should I say, because it, it does exist. It does exist for all police officers. But in New York City, they got a, a, a mayor that's campaigning for president, and when he's speaking about this case in particular, he's already passed judgment before it even went to trial. He says the family is going to get justice. So all these officers are on the street realizing that. The mayor's office does not have their back. So to have a legislator call me, call me right after it happened and offer this, you know, that, that just does wonders for my heart and for all the police officers in Nassau County. In terms of the mass shootings, uh, today the president on Twitter called for background checks, presumably universal background checks. This, this discussion is probably going to begin again about background checks. Where does the union stand? 
you know what? I, I don't I don't get into uh, you know gun control uh, topics. You know, my my personal opinion. I I think I should leave out of this. Uh, you know. Obviously, they should do, you know, background checks on everything, anything and everything that we do. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, that's a good thing. That, but that's all I'm going to comment on that. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you, Josh. All right.